So for this video, we are going to be looking at the third week of the LADA practices. So contained within this video would have been the LADA session five and the LADA session six. Already in the previous two videos, the previous two weeks, um, in LADA sessions one, two, three, and four, if you would have attended all four sessions, you would have cooked all five dishes required for the criteria twice. So here we go then for session five. So in this session, it would have been one of the sessions, one of your practical sessions of the uh, week. We would have been again cooking the amuse bouche dish, which would have been sauteed chicken livers with dice, chorizo, sausage, red wine, jus. A Thai chicken broth would have been the second course, which obviously remember that goes fits in with your potage and broth uh, course. And a fillet de place bursi served on diced spring vegetables, which obviously goes with the fish course. So, like usual, we'd have had the mise en place list. So, if this would have been the, the prep order, and if you would have prepped all this uh, ingredients in this order, then obviously you'll be uh, well on track, and this will be a systematic order to produce the, the dishes in a good time manner. So, chicken broth. I'm not going to go through this slide too much because if you've read the last two. Um, watch the last two videos you would know exactly what we're going to do here with the chicken stock um, we're going to get it um, onto the board onto a simmer for, for two hours if we can get it longer than two hours great um, the longer the better but two hours minimum and skimming as we as we go the fish exactly the same as what we've done in the previous two um, videos you'll probably get just half a fish and remember that's two fillets and with the two fillets you would have got a long fillet and a short fillet fold them into the least which is a nice folded shape make sure they're nice and nice and trimmed and then you're going to make a fish stock with the carcass remember no heads or guts and unlike the chicken stock this only goes on for 20 minutes once it's boiled skim in as well and if you go more than 20 minutes then you could um, cloudy the stock and um, add bitter notes which is certainly not what you want to do for the fish sauce, exactly the same as we've done previously. Obviously, fish stock re reduced, add white wine, reduced, add some cream, and then um, simmer. Remember not to boil, otherwise you'll separate the fat. Uh, remove um, the sauce off the heat, place it into two bowls. Into one of the bowls, add uh, a yeg egg yolk, which forms a liaison. Um, we could add some fennel leaves, tomato concasse, which is the diced tomato once it's been blanched. Um, can add and obviously that will um, change the appearance and, and uh, flavour. For the mousse bouche, we're going to finely brimwile the shallot and garlic, dice a chorizo sausage, S -s trim the two chicken livers, place about three sprigs of pea, pea shoots in the fridge, which will obviously um, refresh them and um, firm them up ready for service. Reduce two croutes, which is obviously sliced bread, which has been um, brushed with olive oil and then either shallow fried or grilled any shape will do as it says there on point five but make sure that both shapes are the same um, for this dish the livers do not have to be placed on top of the croup it's totally up to you you can be creative with with this because obviously you've got chorizo as well so to finish the amuse bouche heat up the frying pan add a teaspoon of oil saute ch chorizo it's quite a lot of fat in chorizo so you don't need um, a lot of oil uh, add the shallot garlic cooking tool translucent you'll probably find here that the color will be quite red because there's a lot of paprika in chorizo um, saute the chicken livers until just coloring place the plates and the croutes into the oven exactly like we've done before um, deglaze the pan with 25 mils of red wine um, you could add some lamb stock if you wanted to to, to that and then when it comes to plating up uh, point number 10 suggests that you place the chicken livers on top or on side of the croup dress the plate with sauce and the garnish with the, with the pea shoots that were in the fridge. Obviously the um, plating up is totally up to you, but I would certainly be looking up getting those chicken livers and croups um, together. For the broth, exactly like we've done before, um, bring the chicken stock to the boil, add brimwild ingredients, pasta, coriander stalks, um, simmer for about 10 minutes, remove the stalks, because otherwise they, they will go bitter. Uh, add a squeeze of lime juice, got any lemongrass um, kicking around that will obviously enhance the Thai flavours as well. A little hint of chilli but it doesn't want to be uh, hot. Um, into two identical warm bowls, sprinkle with chopped coriander and serve. Fish, like we've done before, obviously the fish
dish goes into oven, into a saute pan filled up with um, half stock buttered cartouche into the oven for about eight minutes. And once it's cooked, take it out, put the fish onto um, a baking tray. The sauce that had the egg yolk in it, your liaison, nappy that over the fish under a hot salamander, which will give it a good glaze. Drain the veg, plate neatly into the center of the plate, place the fish on top. Uh, any remaining sauce, the sauce that didn't have the egg yolk in it, just so make sure that's nice and warm and use that to, um, to garnish around the fish. So that's the end of um, the first session of week three. So that would have been larder session five. Moving on to larder session six. And as you can see, no surprise, we'll be looking at lamb's neck and polenta. So again, this is the other two dishes of your five for your criteria. Your mise en place list just like we have before so the lamb butchery like we've done previously removing the, um, the fat and the um, elastin and the sinew etc you're going to be taking off the bone you're going to be batting it out with a rolling pin um, between two sheets of cling film uh, any excess um, cuts of meat we're going to put through a robocoop make into a farce make sure that's seasoned Spread that over the uh, battered out lamb neck, roll it up, and we'll tie it up into five or six pieces. Um, when we come to making the lamb stock, we roast the bones off. Um, good, good 20 minutes in the oven while it's um, in the oven. You caramelise some mirepoix. You certainly don't want the mirepoix burnt because obviously you have bitter notes. At the bones, the juices to the saucepan of the mirepoix, deglaze with 15 ml of red wine, cover with some water, bring to the boil. Now it says here on point number four for at least two hours, the longer the better. If you can get it for four, four hours, great, but remember it's only a five hour exam, so certainly a minimum of two hours. However, I've mentioned before, on numerous occasions, the lamb is quite fatty, so you will need to be skimming um, as much fat off the top of this as you can. If you don't, you'll end up with um, the fat residue in your sauce, and that will certainly knock your points off. like we've done before when we're going to braise the lamb we're going to seal, seal the, the lamb neck off after it's had a good season get a good colour on the um, the outside place that into a sauteuse pan we're then going to uh, add some mirepoix add some stock some red wine times bay leaf and some foil and into the oven for a good two hours turning it every 30 minutes to give it a good cook after the two hours we're then going to remove the lamb's neck put, wrap them into some tin foil and uh, keep them warm and obviously the liquor will then be strained and added to the lamb stock. Polenta, just like we've done before, there's the recipe for the polenta. Remember, I've, I've said on the previous two videos, it's just like making porridge. Um, once you've got that thick consistency, you would turn it off the, the stove. Uh, you would add some seasoning, some Parmesan cheese, some herbs. You could add a touch of chili if you wanted to. Um, and then wrap it into some cling film and form it into a nice cylindrical sausage type shape get it in the fridge and it will um, firm up. The longer in the fridge, the firmer it will go. Tomato sa salsa, tomato concasse, obviously that is a, a, a tomato that's had the stalk removed and then where the um, the core of the stalk was, you remove that with a, a paring knife the opposite side of the stalk, make a cross in the skin, put the tomato into boiling salty water for about 15 to 18 seconds, remove the tomato, place it straight to ice cold water, and it should start to, the skin should start to ski, uh, peel off. It's what you want, is the, the skin off. Um, and then remove the skin once it's cool enough to cut the tomato into four, get rid of all the, um, the, the pips and the seeds, and then dice the tomato flesh into brimwell. Add this to um, brimwell shallot, peppers, some garlic, red chili, some coriander, and some lime, and you should end up with a nice, fresh, salsa you could um, put a bit of mint in there as well if we had any carrot puree so obviously we're going to um, uh, peel and cut a carrot into small dice sweat it off with some some butter and then we want to um, put it into some water give it a bit of a, a boil up um, drain it blend it add some seasoning and then obviously you should end, end up with a nice puree um, if you've made this early on in the session then obviously you would then it down to reheat later but if you um, made this just before service then obviously you just want to keep it warm the 
potatoes, obviously, we're going to um, turn the potatoes into barrel shapes. You can see the picture at the bottom here. There's some nice barrel shaped potatoes. If you can't get perfect barrel shape, it's not essential, but as long as all the potatoes are exactly the same size. Par cook in sort, salted water. What that means is that you bring them to the boil and you cook them about half the way through. Um, and then um, you're going to brush them with oil, season, and roast them in the oven. Obviously, when you are par boiling, you need to be careful that you don't overboil them because if you do, they'll go into the mash. If they go into the mash, you'll never get roast potatoes. Once they're in the oven, turn them every so often and get nice um, colour and crispness on the, the outside. Finish the polenta, obviously, by frying it. Um, it doesn't say on, on this slide that you can pan it, but I would pan it. So slice it, pan it, which is egg flour and breadcrumbs, um, shallow fry or deep fry until you get nice crispy on the outside and then make sure you obviously serve it with the um, salsa. Uh, present with the Parmesan cheese twill on um, point number six. What that is, is grated Parmesan cheese. Use the fine um, grater attachment to the, to the grater. Um, grate some Parmesan cheese, um, get it onto a baking tray. Put that in the oven for about 150 degrees for about five to six minutes. Obviously, the cheese will start to melt. Um, take it out and use either a pallet knife, put it onto a whiteboard, and then you can either cut these into um, shapes or you can um, get a round cutter and cut them out. And then you get a nice thin layer of um, essentially grated cheese that's obviously been melted. And that gives a nice texture and um, presentation to the, to the dish. As you just like we've, we've done before, obviously we um, um, deglaze with uh, 150 mils of red wine, reduce by th three quarters, add the lamb stock, reduce again, and then strain just before you want to use it. Once the lamb necks have come out of the oven, we're going to um, keep them wrapped in foil, let them rest, get a nice warm plate in the oven, make sure it's clean, take it out, put the warmed up carrot puree onto the plate slice the lamb neck into nice, neat slices and put it to the side of the carrot puree don't go covering the whole carrot puree up put it to the side so you can still see the puree add the turn potatoes and add the heated jus so that would have been it for session six so at the end of the third week now you would have been able to have practiced all five dishes three times now so you would have had a good indication of what dishes you would have wanted to do we would have let you choose what dishes you, you can do, but obviously you would have uh, had a good indication now.